Hi guys and welcome to this session by IntelliPad. MySQL is the most popular relational database in the world right now. It is popular for its easy use. And today we have gathered here to understand some basic concepts related to MySQL. But before we get into all of that, please subscribe to our channel to never miss an update from IntelliPad. Now let's talk about today's agenda. So we'll start today's session with basic statements like insert, create, delete, update. From there, we'll move on and talk about the various different operators in MySQL. Once we have done that, we'll move on and talk about different joins in MySQL. Once we have all of that in the back, we'll talk about various different functions in MySQL like date, aggregate, uh, numeric, etc. From there, we'll move on and talk about subquery. And once we have done that, we'll finish today's session off by understanding what is set operators. Also guys, we do provide end-to-end -end training on SQL. So if you're interested, you can check out the course details given in the description below. Now, let's just get into the session. Let's get into the basics of SQL and understand what is SQL and then start working on the local environment using MySQL commands guys. SQL stands for structured querying language which is basically a scripting language guys. It is not a programming language. Don't confuse yourself with programming language and a scripting language. Both have differences. Now the primary concept of SQL is to only access the database that are part of the servers. It includes database creation, deletion, fetching rows, fetching columns, modifying them, you know, subsetting them and then submitting it as an output. It also basically helps us in manipulating and retrieving data stored in a relational database guys. When I, when I say relational database, it is simply nothing but a concept of having relationship between tables. In a database, there can be multiple tables that can be accommodated. Database is simply nothing but collection of tables. When we have collection of tables, there are chance that we might have tables that are not interdependent or interrelated with each other. But in, in a concept like relational database, there must be always a relationship between tables across databases so it becomes easy for us to retrieve data whenever it is required from when whatever database that we have and then submit an output as a part of analysis guys so mysql is basically an example for relational database only it does not fall non-relational database like mongodb we do not use it here we use a relational database concept only postgresql uh, sql server Sybase and MS Access, these are other examples for relational database guys. With that said, let's get into understand what are the main classifications of SQL. There are four different types, however three are very important, DDL, DML and DCL. DDL stands for data definition language, various DCL stands for data control language. DML as usual, it stands for data manipulation language. Now let's see each and everything in detail. DDL, as I told you, it is a definition language which actually consists of SQL commands that can be used to define the database schema, guys. Basically, when I say database schema, it is the structure of the database that we are trying to architect. Then it basically allows you to modify, add or delete the logical structures which either contains the data or to access and maintain the data. It basically perform simple, you know, architecturing of database is what can be done using DDL. There are four different functions that can be uh, part of DDL, which is create, alter, drop and truncate. Create a command helps us to create database and its objects. Alter basically lets us modify the contents that are created drop function drop command helps us to delete or remove a particular object from the database and truncate primarily removes everything from the table you know letting us save a lot of memory so there's a key difference between drop and truncate a drop will simply delete objects whereas truncate removes everything we will be seeing this visually so that we can understand the difference of both drop and truncate uh, with regards to dml as, as the name suggests, it actually helps us in manipulating the objects that we have inside our environment. There are four different functions again here. Select command, insert command, update command and delete command. Select statement works as a print statement itself. So when we wanted to print a output, we use print something. So something gets printed. Select statement exactly works as a print statement. Various, we will be specifying the columns and the dimensions that we need to extract from the database and print, a, print as an output. 
insert command lets us to insert data into a table or a database guys update command it basically lets us modify the values that are inside the tables it is not modifying the table itself it basically lets us modify the values that are inside the tables or databases and almost and there is another command called delete which basically deletes the records it will not delete the table or the database guys it will delete the values that are present inside them keeping the structure unaffected just a quick info guys, IntelliPad does provide end-to-end -end training on MySQL. So if you are interested, you can check out the course details given in the description below. Now, let's get back into the session. Talking about DCL, DCL is basically more or less an administrative uh, command, which basically lets us to provide access to someone and then revoke the access that was given to someone. So basically, it, with, it deals with data governance, uh, you know, dealing with permissions that can be given to a particular person or not. Now to talk about working on databases, the first main command that we need to know is creating a database. How do we create a database? The basic command is create database and then you can specify the name wherein it can actually create a database for us. Now let me open my MySQL workbench so I can explain you by performing it. Now if you, what you are saying is the MySQL workbench using which we are going to execute the piece of codes that we have just learned guys. Yeah, here we are going to execute our query. If you see the schemas here, I have chosen schemas. There are three different schemas. Let me explain you. Three different schemas are basically databases. Each database will have multiple objects, tables, views, stored procedures and functions. Our primary focus is handling tables and views. So I'm choosing tables here. If I open tables, it tells me what are the different tables that we have. If we need to create a new database, which is not existing in this schema, which is Sakila, Sys and World. If I wanted to create a new database, I have to write create database and the database name guys. I'm going to write test as my database name and then simply execute it. It gets executed and then it says create database test has been performed with a green tick and then it says one row is affected but however i am not able to see the database here what we have to do is we have to simply refresh this so that it appears here you can see the database created with the four different objects but there are no tables inside the database that we just created no views are stored procedures we can create tables we can create views we can create stored procedures in the entire module but to just show you how to create a database we can use this command let's get into the deck again let's see how to drop a database basically remove a database from the existing server drop database is the command for dropping a database from the tool so what i'm going to do is i don't require this database test so i'm going to write drop database test and execute it it says it is running and rows affected and you can see that that particular database that we just created a moment ago is thrown away from the server so there are only three database databases which are present in the schema by default this is basically creating a database and dropping a database now how do i manage a database say for an example i have multiple tables in, in sakila i have multiple tables in uh, world also i do have a lot of tables let me show you the tables in world in tables also we do have this now assume that see here there is a table called city in shakila also there's this table called city in world as well but how do i communicate to the machine which database is supposed to be used for it to you know retrieve values from so first i have to specify what database should be used so I have to write use context. Use is the command which actually activates an environment and then pulls the data uh, you know, from the tables that are pertaining to this particular database, guys. Now I can write select everything from city. Now let me execute this. If I execute this, it says zero rows affected with a green tick, basically telling us that it got executed. Now let's remove it and then write select everything from city i'm not specifying which database but it actually will retrieve that output which are part of 
the secular database what you are seeing as an output here result grid is basically the output from the shakila database guys now say example i wanted to retrieve a city table from world database how do i do it now it is very simple you have to use world and then execute it let me quickly execute this it got it says zero rows affected now let me write the same piece of code select everything from city now we will have a different output from what we had in the first place because this table is different from the city table which is present in the shakila database guys you can see the difference as output we had some other dimensions in the in this city table let me open this table for you so we can compare and see what is the output here we have city id city country id in last update whereas in the world city table we have id name country code district and population this is basically managing a database whenever you wanted to access a file or a table from a particular database we'll have to use use command in order to retrieve those tables and start working on it now how do i know what are the databases that are present in my environment so the function is show databases guys so i have to simply write show databases and execute it it will list down all the databases that are there shakila sys and world are the databases for us to use various performance schema information schema and mysql is for administrative purposes which got installed while we were installing it we cannot access these three uh, databases however these are the databases that we can access and start working upon this is all about managing a database guys just a quick info guys intellipad does provide end to end training on mysql so if you are interested you can check out the course details given in the description below now let's get back into the session then talking about data types there are multiple data types which basically they mysql supports us we can you know see in depth of data types while we are creating tables but on a very higher level we can see that it has numerical data date and time data character strings unicode character strings and binary and each and every data type is actually given with in detail notes on how many characters does it allow what are its specifications numeric data types approximate numeric data types date and time data types character string data types unicode character data types and binary data types now data types are arguments that we supply into tables for us to you know create a particular type of execution in a numerical column i can perform only numerical operations or arithmetic operations i cannot perform string operations on numerical data right so it is very important to know the data types while we are creating a table but we will see them when we are creating the table to work with table how do we create a table how do we insert values to the table that we are creating how do we update the table with any other value from the original value how do we alter the table say example if i wanted to rename the table i can use alter command also if i wanted to add an additional column to the existing table i can use add a column command and i can use delete query drop query delete table and truncate table we will be seeing in detail of it in the entire module let's talk about constraints constraints are basically arguments that helps us to restrict the table from having values that we do not want for any operation say example we are performing some data analysis work where we do not want a particular value to be present in the table so while we are creating the table itself we can specify n number of constraints like check constraint unique constraint primary key constraint foreign key constraint and not null constraint basis this we can actually control the inputs that are supplied to the table that can be used later for data analysis we will be seeing in detail of table constraints as well then talking about operators we are going to see two important operators arithmetic operators and logical operators arithmetic operators are addition subtraction multiplication division and modulus modulus basically retrieves as the remainder from a division operation and in logical operations we are going to cover a lot distinctive uh, operators like and are not between like not like if null in is not in is null is not null and multiple things 
and let's jump into the most important aspect of this learning the statements now when i say learning the statements we are going to retrieve data from databases with the help of these statements only the statements that you are seeing in the right select from where group by having order by distinct and limit are going to be very crucial in terms of retrieving data from database any database and then you know manipulate it if and when required so there are examples and syntaxes for each and every statements here however when we are you know executing each piece of code we will be able to learn that as well as i told you the crucial part of mysql is learning about sql joins where we are going to learn about four different types of joins inner left right and cross cross join is not so very helpful but we can use union operator to perform a full join which we will see when we are executing it inner join basically it retrieves us data that are matching only between two tables that we are trying to join left table simply retrieves everything from the left table and the matching records from the right table right table retrieves everything from the right table and the matching records from the left table cross join simply performs a cartesian product guys it basically takes every row in the table 1 and multiplies it with all the rows in the table 2 say for an example if in my table 1 i have 5 rows in my table 2 i have 5 rows it gives me 25 rows as an output that is what a cartesian product does in set operators we are going to see what is union and union all also we are going to see an extensive list of aggregation functions which are very vital in real time application guys sum average minimum maximum count standard deviation population sample variance population and sample so those who are aspiring to become a data scientist or a data analyst it is very important to know standard deviation and variance as well we are going to cover that as well as i told you sub queries are again very crucial with regards to any sql language that we are writing here also in mysql as well sub queries are very efficient in terms of retrieving data from tables that are you know given as a subset for a superset table we will be saying how to write sub queries in a where clause how to use any and all function in sub queries how to use sub queries in a from statement how to use exist method and how to write a correlated sub query as well which are very important with regards to manipulating and extracting data from multiple tables that are linked with each other in real time date functions are very crucial with regards to people who are working on the lines of reporting because almost all the reports are based on a timeline where we are going to use a lot of date functions to manipulate the data that we have we are going to see add date add time current date current time current time stamp date date add date diff day function day name function hour make date make time minute month month name year now second quarter string to date time time difference and week so there are like 24 25 functions of date we are going to cover very extensively talking about numeric functions as we know it is very important to handle the numerical variables that are present in the data so we are going to learn about ceiling function floor exponential logarithmic ln function natural logarithmic basically modulus function pi function power function rand sin square root and round functions talking about string functions again most of the data that we have in real time is either in the form of string or in the form of numerics so how do we handle string functions how do we concatenate two strings or multiple strings how do we find a particular string inside a set how do we find the position of an index in a, of a string lower case converting it into lower case left length lower case again left trim repeating functions replace functions reverse functions right functions right trim functions space function substring function substring index trim and upper function so these are the extensive list of what we are going to cover in the entire module guys we will be covering every single function with regards to syntax how does the syntax works what are the arguments that a particular syntax will take and how do we execute with a data present in the database just a quick info guys intellipad does provide end to end training on mysql so if you are interested you can check out the course details given in the description below
So this brings us to the end of this session. I hope you found it informative. If you have any queries, you can leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching guys.